Confrontation on the Bridge is a painting created by Jacob Lawrence, depicting the 1965 Selva to Montgomery marches, which were peaceful protests led by African Americans in response to the blocking of African American voting rights. At the Edmund Pettus Bridge, this protest was met with mass violence, leading to the severe injuries of many activists present at the time. Despite attempts at rectifying historical wrongdoings against African Americans, Harsh treatment and racial segregation has had a lasting impression on the circumstances many African Americans find themselves in today. African Americans still continue to generate less income than the national average, still contribute a significant proportion of impoverished individuals, and have amongst the lowest levels of educational attainment in the United States. Which brings me to, good afternoon, my name is Tyler D, and today I will be presenting African American socioeconomic disparities. My research question is, to what extent has the socioeconomic inequalities faced by African Americans in the 21st century hindered their access to improved financial opportunities? And my argument is, as a result of the poor financial circumstances faced by many African Americans today, their opportunities for socio socioeconomic improvement are scarce. These restrictions have severely limited various aspects of African American lives, including their income and education. Thus. Many African Americans find themselves unable to overcome the many obstacles associated with financial hardships, prompting the continued inequalities in socioeconomics apparent today. As illustrated in this report by the United States Joint Economic Committee, African American families have a significantly lower income than other ethnicities present in the United States, making just un oh, above half of what white Americans make annually. This graph indicates that non-Hispanic whites make roughly $70,000 a year, while black Americans make roughly $42,000. Although there has been a gradual increase in African American wages, it, it continues to remain far behind the national average. This divide is largely attributed to how few resources were available to African Americans throughout the centuries prior, as they were provided with lower quality facilities for their education, libraries, and many other necessities. These historical instances of racial inequality have continued to affect the lives of many African Americans today as limited opportunities for social mobility have left many African Americans in unfavorable circumstances. As a result of the socioeconomic constraints caused by racial segregation, the education of many African Americans today has continued to decline. This is indicated in a graph by the National Center for Education Statistics, which reveals a sharp divide between the educational attainment of African Americans and many other ethnicities present in the United States. It indicates that White Americans between the ages 25 through 29 have a roughly 55% chance of having an associate's degree or higher, whereas African Americans average around 30, 35%. This difference in educational attainment is often contributed to by the quality of a student's instruction. A course taught by a more qualified teacher would yield better results, allowing greater opportunities for students to succeed. In areas with a less invested education, schools are unable to provide an adequate amount of academic resources. Thus, student performance declines, which limits their access to higher levels of education. This proves to be significant, as an individual's academic achievement is a major factor when employers are considering a new hire, placing many African Americans in areas with lower educational attainment in a disadvantageous position. As a result, African Americans often receive jobs with lower salaries, less benefits, and insufficient working conditions. Furthermore, the financial hardships faced by many African Americans today has further contributed to this issue. In a report by the United States Census Bureau, it is stated that although African Americans only make up roughly 13% of the United States population, they contribute over 20% of its impoverished peoples. A large proportion of these individuals reside in areas with generally lower incomes. With local taxes being the main source of revenue for many community resources, Lower wages limit how much funding can be invested into the quality of these programs. <coughs> Schools are also one of the many resources funded by the community, making local revenue a determining factor in the quality of an area's education. Consequently, the financial limitations of areas with primarily African American students prevent many individuals from excelling in academics, making it increasingly difficult to acquire the scholarships used for paying college tuition. This results in lower job quality, which then leaves many African Americans in a situation similar to where they began. This continuous cycle of deprivation is one of the greatest contributors to the continued poverty of African Americans, in which many find it difficult to push past the restrictions set by limited financial resources. As a result of my analysis, I have come to the conclusion 
the allocation of resources towards primarily African American schools is the best approach towards the long term equality of African American socioeconomics. One of the greatest struggles in African American inequality is educational prerequisites that are required to attain a higher quality of education. To solve this problem, funds could be driven towards schools that have a predominantly African American community. These schools would be able to better afford higher quality education, infrastructure, and be able to grant teachers more benefits in addition to their salaries. This would attract more qualified teachers, significantly increasing the educational attainment of many African American students, and providing them with an opportunity to become competitive candidates for the career they desire. However, my approach is limited, as allocation of resources towards primarily African American education would have to be taken from elsewhere possibly coming from an increase in taxes or other local resources. Moreover, improvement in education would be a slow process, as teachers may be skeptical of working in areas that have generally shown lower levels of educational attainment and have only recently shown signs of improvement. Despite such limitations, attempting to improve the source of African-American socioeconomic divide may be the best option for creating true equality. Thank you. All right, two questions for you. First up, what evidence did you gather but you ended up not using and then why didn't you use it? I ended up gathering some information about how teachers are affected by the common um, amount of African Americans in certain schools. However, I decided not to use statistics specifically about teachers as it trade too far off my topic and may have extended my time over the set limit. All right, and uh, if you had more time, <laughs> what additional research would you have conducted? If I had more time to conduct my research, I would have analyzed specific types of schools or specific schools with primarily African American communities to see how their educational attainment is, is in comparison to other schools. 